This keynote tidbit, called Text and Shapes, involves using shapes to contain text. Hopefully, what I demonstrate will provide you with ideas for developing more interesting slides. Your shapes palette has shapes in many categories, from basic shapes to those that you create. I will use just a few for this activity. I start with a simple circle shape that I transform into an oval. Select the circle, make alterations, and begin typing to add the text. You can make adjustments to the text and also to the shape. Watch as I format to a copper plate font. size 60 on a blue background with a red outline. Notice that I choose the red for the outline from the colors I have saved to a palette in the color fill box. I like to use a combination of shapes along with text for added effects. Here I'm going to choose a star. When I choose a star, you'll notice that there are two little dots. I'm going to click on the outer one, which creates a number of points. In this case, I am going to stop at 12 points. The inner one allows you to make adjustments to the points themselves. Then I go to my resources in the sidebar and click on the color fill to make my star red and I'm going to make adjustments to my line and select blue for the color wheel. This will provide me with a background for my next shape. That shape is a diamond along with my text to be placed on top of the star. I enter the text, select it, and change the font to Shrick Hand. You might not have that font in your listing. Also notice that recently used fonts are made available to me at the top of the font list. I set the font size to 50 and assign a gradient fill, which I had set up previously. Adjustments to the shape involve adding a blue border along with a light blue fill. Next, I take the diamond shape, readjust its size, and align it to be centered on the star background. Then I select both, go to Arrange, then Group to combine the shapes into one. Animating objects on a slide helps to maintain the audience interest. This is accomplished by using builds and actions. These are available when you click on animate in the sidebar. I start by selecting the first shape. Notice that in the sidebar animate is selected along with build in. I click on add an effect to create a build in. For the first shape, I will select swoosh and have it appear from the left with a duration of two seconds.
I will then assign a twirl as a build for the next shape. It will twirl clockwise, but I want it to twirl longer, so I set the duration to three seconds. Builds are engaged with the mouse click. I want these builds to happen automatically. So I select the first shape, go to build order at the bottom of the sidebar. The two builds are displayed in the listing. I select the first build and change the start option to after transition. Then I change the build of my second group to happen after build one. Finally, I'm going to the toolbar to click on play to preview my animation. Okay, that went pretty nice. Now I am going to my shapes listing. In the objects section, there is a monetary bill that I want to locate and select. Using the bill, I can illustrate that any text information that is typed on the bill shows up only in the colored portion of the bill itself. No text goes into the blank portion of the bill as I type. After I resize the bill, I make it worth $1,000, and since bills aren't blue, I go to color fill and make it green. Now I want to locate a pair of goggles in the science section. The goggles are mostly blank. In cases like this, you are better off to use the text tool to create your text. So I select the text tool. Type in my text and combine the text with the goggles and then group both together. Add a simple move in animation to the bill and goggles with each moving in from the left. I start with the bill, go to add an effect, choose move in, and then set it to move in after build two. Next, with the goggles group selected, I do the same and have the move take place after build three. Again, I click play to preview the action. In this last example, I will illustrate how you can use shapes and embed them in line within the text. For the shapes, I will go to the food section and select an apple, a banana, and a lemon. Naturally, I color fill each fruit with an appropriate color and readjust the size to my liking. Next, I will use a rounded rectangle shape as a container for my text. I adjust the size and enter the text. I then use my resources in the sidebar to reformat the text. 
select Babu as a font with size 50. I keep the font white. Next, I start with the apple. Copy it with Edit, Copy, or using Command C. Return to the text, click to establish an insertion point between eat and your, and do a Command V to paste. I then insert the banana and lemon the same way while adjusting the rectangle shape as needed. Finally, I delete the original fruit. Animation for this shape will include a build in, followed by an action, and then a build out. I start by selecting my shape with the text and fruit, check to see that I am in animate mode, select build in and click on Add an Effect. I want it to build in from left to right. Next I click on Action and choose Jiggle. Finally, I want it to move out from right to left. All that is left now is to make this all happen automatically. So I assign the order of these builds to happen after builds 4, 5, and 6. That completes this segment of Keynote Tidbits, Texts and Shapes. Hope you enjoyed and benefited from spending this time with me. Thank you.